Okay, here we are with another uh, episode of uh, Through the Bible. Um, last time we left off where Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were about to be killed. All the wise men of Babylon were about to be killed because this king had a dream and none of the wise men could tell him the dream because he forgot what it was, but it really had freaked him out. Okay, Daniel chapter 2, verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and season. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge unto them that have understanding. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. I thank you, O God, and I praise you, O God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desire of thee. For thou know, for thou hast know, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went unto Arioch, whom the king had ordered to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He said thus unto him, Don't destroy the wise men of Babylon. Bring me before the king, and I'll show unto the king the interpretation. Ariak brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said unto him, I found a man who's captive of Judah who, think, who can make known the interpretation to the king. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, Are you able to make known unto me the dream which I have dreamed? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise men, astrologers, musicians, soothsayers show the king. You know, there's some things, problems you run into in life that the zodiac is not going to answer. The palm reader is not going to be able to answer. The astrologer, no one's going to be able to answer. Certain things in your life will just, they have you perplexed and troubled. Well, these type of things, God can answer. I mean, he knows every secret of your heart, everything in the universe is known to him. Nothing's hidden from God, including this king's dream. And God basically gave this king his dream to show him what was going to happen. And if you go back uh, earlier in the verse, you see that God sets up kings and takes down kings. Once, in, once again, we see the theme of the book of Daniel, that God is ultimately in control. But there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets and makes known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the last days, in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are this. King, and your thoughts came into your mind on your bed, what should come to pass hereafter? And he reveals secrets, making known unto me what will come to pass. All right. This is where it gets very interesting. Okay. But as for me, this secret is not revealed for me because of any wisdom that I have or any of the living, but for the sakes that make known the interpretation of the king, that you might know the thoughts of your heart. You, O king, saw and behold a great image, this great image whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible, and the image head was of fine gold. Its breasts and arms were of silver, his belly and thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet were part iron and part clay. And you saw till a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon its feet, and there were, which were iron and clay, and broke them in pieces. Then was the iron and the clay and the brass and the silver and the gold broken to pieces together and became like chaff in the summer threshing floors and the wind carried them away to no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Now here we go. Here's the interpretation. This is the dream, and we will tell you the interpretation of the dream. You, O king, are the king of kings, are a king of kings, I'm sorry to say, a king of kings. For God of heaven has given you kingdom and power and strength and glory, and whosoever the children of men dwell, beasts of the field, fowls of the heaven, have given you into your hand, and hath made thee a ruler of them all, thou art at this head of gold. Okay, here's the interpretation. He saw a statue. Its head was gold, silver, bronze. It goes down to metal until it's iron and clay, like the least precious of metals. And what it is, is the, this statue he saw represents different kingdoms. The first kingdom is Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, the kingdom of Babylon. And then it says a kingdom comes after him. You are uh, that head of gold. Breasts, and after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee. 
and another third kingdom of brass, which shall rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, for as much as iron breaks in pieces and subdues all things, the iron shall break all these and shall break in pieces. And wherever you saw the feet and the toes, part of iron, part of clay, and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it the strength of iron. But inasmuch as iron does not mix with clay, miry clay, and as the toes and feet were part iron, part clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas you saw iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves together with the seed of men, but they won't cleave to one another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in these days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to another people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou saw the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and it break in pieces the iron, brass, clay, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation is sure. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and worshipped Daniel, and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors to him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is, your God is a God of gods, and the Lord of lords and revealer of secrets, seeing he's revealed this unto you. Then the king made Daniel a great man, and gave him many gifts, and made him ruler over the providences of Babylon, and the chief of the governors and the wise men of Babylon. And Daniel requested of the king that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would also rule over providences. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Okay. This is pretty amazing stuff. God showed this king what was going to happen. He would have his kingdom, Babylon. Then it would be overtaken by another kingdom, Inferior. And that's what happened in history. The Medes and the Persians came in and took over Babylon. And then after them, another kingdom came. The Greeks came and took over that kingdom. And then after that, we have the kingdom that's like iron that just smashed everybody. That was the Romans. Then the Romans came and smashed that. And then after that kingdom, they say there's a mixed kingdom uh, where it's partly iron and partly clay. And because people don't cleave to one another, it's got the strength of iron, but it's not... You know, it's not a completely united uh, kingdom. And that's the final kingdom. And in the days of that kingdom, it says that God's going to be setting up another kingdom which will have no end. And that's obviously the kingdom of heaven that Jesus was always talking about. He's like, the kingdom of God is within you. You know, uh, receive me. And basically, the kingdom of God is being built within every Christian, every person that takes God into their heart. And that kingdom is being set up right now. Uh, and basically it shows that ultimately that stone comes without hands and becomes a mountain, fills the whole earth, that basically Jesus will return and his kingdom will last forever and ever and ever. And it's pretty amazing. You see what's going on here. Okay, the whole theme of the book of Daniel is basically kings and kingdoms. And you see that God's the ultimate king, but he's going to allow mankind to have their shot. He gives Babylon its shot to rule the world, then he'll give the, the Medes and the Persians their shot. Then he gave the Greeks their shot. Then the Romans their shot. And then finally there'll be this, this mixed kingdom to have its shot. You know, which is, some people say it's uh, the united Europe. I don't know. Uh, the reunified Roman Empire with all of Europe or America. But I kind of doubt it's America. But anyways, it does fit the description of the final days because it's like a united world. Uh, but it's a mixture. It's not like people of one solid attitude in mind. It's all the world's cultures trying to blend together to be this one new world, you know, kingdom, so to speak. Uh, but you see, ultimately, once again, the theme is that God's in control. So if he's in control during all these kingdoms rising and falling, of course he's in control of your life and of everything you go through, every up and every down. But what do we learn from this chapter in Daniel? We learn that God's there for you. Because what was going to happen? Daniel was going to be killed. His body, they said he, the, the, the king's guard was going to go and kill all the wise men, turn their houses into rubble. So we see that if you're faced with a time in your life like that seems beyond human help, beyond human understanding even, this was like someone was asking something impossible. Hey, tell me what I dreamt last night. Then tell me the meaning of it. That's an impossible. And if you don't, you're going to be killed. 
if you're faced with something similar, if, if you're faced with a similar situation like you have to come up with an unreasonable amount of money or you have to come up with an unreasonable answer at work or something just beyond your own human limits, don't give up. Do what Daniel and these guys did. Go into prayer and seek God, the God who's a king above every king in every kingdom. And he'll answer you right where you are. He'll give you the solution just as he did Daniel. Because you know what? It said, why was Daniel wiser than all the other people? Because the spirit of the holy God was in him. And guess what? God's spirit is in you too. So uh, I hope this was educational to you. A lot of people get twisted and weirded out with the book of Daniel. I know Jehovah's Witnesses, they twist it and weird it out and all this weird stuff. A lot of people do. But if you just look at it plainly for what it is, it's simple. Wow, there's going to be these kingdoms coming, rising and falling, and God's in ultimately control. Uh, so don't get weirded out because Daniel is a book of prophecy, and as we go on further, there's more prophecies. But I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, session of Through the Bible. And I post this on the Facebook and the YouTube and uh, hopefully get a large audience so people can learn because I just I feel that I really have a, a pretty good grasp on God's uh, word and I want to share it with other people. It's my gift to everybody. And I uh, hope you have a great day. Take care.